such a beautiful thing. And I don't want to take a second for granted. All my daylight is in you, Lord. All of my hope, all of my strength, all my daylight is in you, Lord. All of my hope, all of my strength, all my delight is in you, Lord. All of my hope, all of my strength, all my delight is in you, Lord, forevermore. There is no one else for me. God is good. Let us pray and give thanks to Jesus. Father, we thank you for your blessings and we worship you. We receive our songs, we receive our praises, our thanks for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. We bless your church in the name of Jesus. We declare your presence in this place. Jehovah, God of Israel. You are God and we are your servants, so we need you. We need your spirit, Lord, and we pray that you fill us up this morning and speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we bless your church. Amen. Amen. Gloria a Dios. You may be seated. Pueden sentarse, por favor. Bienvenidos. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenidos. ¿Cómo están? Bien. Gracias a Dios. Bienvenida. Ella que es suya, de hermana Regina, es su, es su hermana, bienvenida. Bienvenida, hermana. Nos da mucho gusto conocerle. ¿Cuál es su nombre? Matilde, bienvenida. Aquí todos queremos saludarla, así es que los invito a saludar. To greet one another. Denle un saludo a nuestra hermana Matilda, hermanos que están allá atrás. Hermanos, brothers and sisters y todos. Welcome.
Bienvenidos, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we're going to collect our offerings. Oh, yo tengo un PowerPoint, actually. Who's in the computer? ¿Quién está? Mia López o Mia, I need you to... Hice PowerPoint. Ah, se me olvidó la cosita para avanzar, hija. So, need to alguien que me ayude. You, you help me, right? Me a avanzarlo. Pues si ahí tengo los, el aviso. So, um, well, we're going to collect the offerings. <coughs> Then, but the, the, let me give you an announcement. The one announcement. Uh, next Sunday we have a celebration. We have a party organized by the ladies. So Father's Day, el día del padre, okay. Así es que los esperamos el domingo. Uh, we're going to have our regular service at 9:30, and then 11:30 in Spanish, and then we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a banquet. Va a tener el banquete a las once y media. Ahí está, mira, a las once y media en español. Pero en inglés vamos a estar aquí at 9.30, just a regular schedule, ¿verdad? Este, so los invitamos, eh, traigan a sus esposos o su, sus papás o abuelitos, si está aquí, si lo tienen, pues invítenlos de una bonita manera de, de celebrar y recibir una bendición, que vamos a recibir todos los padres una palabra de bendición y oración. Eh, así es que es el mejor lugar para celebrar, es aquí en la En el, con la iglesia en el templo. So next next Sunday. So Paquito, bring your daddy next Sunday. All right. Y, y todos los demás. Y Genesis Marie, bring your daddy. Los que puedan, que esté aquí, traigan a su abuelito. Amén. Este, y vamos a honrarlos como dice la Biblia. Eh, okay. Well, eh, let us pray and bless the offering. If you have your offering, you want to bring it here, you can do it in the basket, or you can give electronically, like some of you do, and we also bless those offerings. Uh, so let us pray. Father, we thank you for your provision. We bless your name. We thank you because you are the, the giver. You are the one giving us life and strength and health and and the ability to, to earn money, Lord, and we, in obedience to your commandments, we we come to you in not only in obedience but in thankfulness and in faith to sustain, to contribute to your kingdom, to your work here in our church, but also for our missionaries in Senegal. We pray and we bless them, Lord, as well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, pueden venir si quiere usted, si usted preparado, o si ya dieron electrónicamente también. Los bendecimos. Amen. 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 So next Saturday, next Sunday, and last uh, yesterday we have like a, a, our men's gathering, and we're gonna meet in one month on July, the twenty second, a Saturday, and we're talking about last night for the men's gathering. We're uh, probably not gonna be like a like a meeting like we have last night, but we're planning more like a outing, going somewhere to fish. And we're going to invite the youth also on July the 22nd. It's a Saturday uh, because they're they're going to the fishing trip is going to be in the by the beach on ¿Cómo se llama? No, no, it's más cerca. Ya se me olvidó el nombre. ¿Dónde están las fábricas de petróleo? For Freeport, yeah. So we're going to the beach and we're going to fish. So. If we want to invite the youth. I told them, like, if we as men we go and fish, we can invite the youth to to because the beach. That's what I do. <laughs> Instead of fishing, I go to the beach. So I don't want to go myself. So we invited the youth to come as well on July twenty second, coming to the beach, and uh, and fishing. If you like to fish, it's going to be the morning basically, and. Um, and we're going to have a word. We're going to have some spe- something special. And 
so uh, we encourage you. On, on September, we're having a men's camp uh, at the end of September. So we also encourage the men to attend in, in youth. And it's not only for adults or for married men, but also single men. So the youth, we don't want to lose our younger generation. We want to engage with them and connect, give them connect. Amen. Um, so this coming Sunday, Father's Day celebration. I think that's all my announcements. And let's get into the word. And I've been struggling with this message for like a few weeks. And because last week I shared with you about improving our relationships on the, the month of May. Uh, with my message for Mother's Day, it was all about improving our relationships with our, uh, within our families. And uh, last Sunday, do you remember our theme? Our sermon, examine. It was about encouraging one another. And we talk about how discouragement destroys and how can, the Bible says we must to encourage one another. And there are several ways we can encourage one another. And we study a little bit the, the life of Barnabas and as an encourager. That was his nickname, son of encouragement. And how can we encourage one another? But I want to ch ch change gears because I've been praying about this message in, uh, for like three four weeks. And, um, and it's our prophecy. I want to show up the prophecy of the last uh, prophecies of that uh, not yet happened, but some are st start to happen. So we know we can understand the times we're living in and um, what the Bible is instructing us, the Bible is telling us, and the Bible is also telling us what to do. Uh, so the, come with me to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want to share this prophecy I call, well, it's in the Bible. The, the title is the ministry. Well, in Spanish, it's the mystery of iniquity, basically. El misterio de la iniquidad. En español dice otra manera. If you go to the next slide, eh, Mia, please. It's, in, in English, the translation is the secret power of lawlessness. En español es el misterio de la iniquidad. O sea, la maldad. Eh, eh, hermana, eh, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Ay, ¿cómo se llama? Se me olvidó. Eh, sí, Regina. Eh, ¿Su hermana te, habla inglés? P poquito. No, bueno, para decirle. El, ok, that's ok. Eh, eh, so, we're going to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. Vamos a leer 2 Thessalonians 2, del 1 al 13. Lo voy a leer en inglés. Eh, pero habla, it's, it's, it's talking about several things that are really important things eh, for the end times before Jesus comes. And uh, it's really important that we understand what's happening in the world right now. So this is part of this prophecy. Okay. So let me just read. Concerning uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy. Report or letters supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back and so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so, to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawlessness one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroyed by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawlessness one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth 
and so be saved. For this reason, God sends, sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that they all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in the wickedness. But we are always to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and we pray that you teach us this morning, that you clarify in our minds and our hearts and our spirits this word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So the first verse is talking about two events. Okay. It, it, it seems like it's just one, but it's two. El verso uno nos habla de dos eventos, aunque parece uno solo. So, hay dos eventos que van a pasar, que no han pasado. Y por eso dice, no les crean, si alguien dice que ya pasó, no ha pasado. Porque entonces nos da varias señales de por qué no ha pasado y cuándo va a pasar. So, there's two. There's two events in verse one, I mean, in chapter two, verse one, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. So, there's two events. Go next, eh, Mia. Uh, next, okay. One is the coming of the Lord, and the second event is our gathering with the Lord, with Jesus Christ, with the Lord Jesus. Okay, so let me just explain the first, the gathering with with Him. Nosotros habla dos eventos: la venida, segunda venida de Cristo, y nuestra reunión con Cristo antes de su venida. Okay, entonces son dos eventos. En el griego, en la venida de Cristo le llamamos arpazo. I mean, nuestra reunión con Cristo se llama arpazo, la palabra griega, ser arrebatados. Porque en 1 Tesalonicenses el apóstol Pablo les explica eso. Explica, que, y en Corintios también, que nosotros los que queremos en Jesús vamos a ser arrebatados. Y vamos a, los que murieron en Cristo van a resucitar. Y nosotros los que estamos vivos vamos a ser arrebatados. Dase la palabra arpazo. Okay, the Bible teaches us about a gathering with Christ, that the day when everyone in Christ will resurrect, it's going to be the sound of a trumpet, and the, the, the believers who died in Christ, the, those who are asleep in Christ, that's all the term that the Bible uses for those who died and they're Christians. Since the first century until now, they call those who sleep. Okay, so those who sleep are going to awake and are going to resurrect, and we at the same time we are, that we are alive, we're going to be transformed, and we're going to gather together with Jesus in the clouds. That's in First Thessalonians. Let me just read it for you. You see, you just go back one page. First Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, <clears throat> verse 13 through 18, explaining this. Um, Well, let me just read it. Brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, those people who die in Christ, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not proceed those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will, will be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Amen. So he say. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them. En español dice, los que estamos vivos seremos arrebatados juntamente con ellos. Para, en, la, en las nubes nos reuniremos con Jesús. Eso es que ha llamado el arrebatamiento, el harpazo en Greek. Eh, so that's why I put a cloud. Like las nubes nos recuerdan que un día Jesús va a venir y nos vamos a ir con él en su iglesia. So this is a prophecy. This is... In the prophetic calendar of God, this is our next event. 
Okay. Well, some, some things are going on right now already. Okay. This is in preparation. This is signs that Jesus is coming soon. We don't know when. Paul, when he wrote this letter, this is first century. And he has the conviction that Jesus can come in his time. And he didn't. Already 18 centuries has, or 19 centuries has happened. And, and, but there's so many signs that we know that everything is ready right now. That's another teaching. I can teach you. On, I have a, another a conference, actually. Nine signs of the end times. And, I mean, many prophecies of the Old Testament that can be fulfilled in our times. Like instant communication worldwide. Like um, uh, map, weapons of mass destruction. Like to only destroy the flesh. All this is prophesied in the Old Testament for the end time. So we have like the technology today that all these, like at least nine signs of prophecies of the Old Testament can be fulfilled in our time. That doesn't mean that Jesus is going to come tomorrow to the, tonight, but he can if he, if it's in his plan. We cannot say when. Maybe it's going to pass another 10 years or 100. We don't know. But the times are getting ready. Things are getting hot in the world, like spiritually. And I want to explain that to you today in this, this teaching. So you understand, this is one event. It's called the arrebatamiento. This is an event, arrebatamiento, or gathering with Jesus. But there's another event which is called in verse 1, the coming of the Lord. Okay, the coming of the Lord has a different purpose. And if you if you notice when we read First Thessalonians, with our gathering with the Lord, we're gonna gather in the clouds. Okay, Jesus is gonna descend, he's gonna come to the clouds, and we're gonna be with Jesus forever. So he's taking us to heaven. We're gonna our, our body's gonna be transformed in an incorruptible body. And all the things that first Corinthians chapter fifteen is teaching us about the resurrection. And our transformation. and uh, But the second coming of the Lord is a different event. Uh, there's a debate, like if it's in the, at the same time or not, we don't know. Some of us, we interpret that probably it's a different timing. The harpazo, our, our gathering with Jesus in the clouds is going to be first. And then the second coming of the Lord, when now the Lord is going to come to Jerusalem. Okay. He's going to put his feet on the ground, and he's going to have a battle, okay? And that's the second coming. The second coming of Jesus is to judge the enemies of God, okay? So that's what he's talking about in verse 1. These two events that are going to happen in the future, not yet. <clears throat> that's what he's explaining. In first century, there were people saying, hey, he already came. But he's saying, no, 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 don't be deceived. There's going to be signs. It's not, it, it hasn't happened yet. So um, let me explain about the coming of the Lord and our gathering with him. So I hope you understand. Espero que entendiste que es diferente evento, la, la segunda venida de Jesús y el arrebatamiento. El arrebatamiento es un evento donde nos juntamos todos los cristianos, todos los que hemos puesto la fe en Jesús en las nubes para estar con él para siempre en el cielo. Eh, so cuando Jesús viene, it's already been going on what is called in Revelation the Great Tribulation. It's going to be already in place. Uh, now, let me just go back to Second Thessalonians. I just want to keep on these verses that we read at the beginning. Second Thessalonians says dos del uno al trece. So <clears throat> then, I hope you got it. Well, you got the next slide. Se me olvidó que tengo slide. So this is the second coming of Jesus. It's called in, in the Greek, that Newton was written in Greek, the parousia. Okay. Cuando, nos, cuando Jesús viene, no a las nubes ya, viene hasta la tierra a guerrear. Jesus is coming in second time, not as he came the first time as a servant, humble. But now he, he will come back the second time as a warrior. Okay. He's going to fight and he's going to defeat the devil again. Uh, but there's something else, okay? Another, well, we can call it event or it's something happening, uh, which is, if we could keep reading, um, 
it, it, this is pre pretty much um, verse 3. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for they will not come until the rebellions occur, rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. In Spanish, it says the rebellion, it says la apostasía. Okay? That's the name that uses in the Spanish the translation. There's going to be a rebellion. There's going to be a man. Uh, it's called in the Revelation the Antichrist. Okay? And um, uh, he's going to reveal to God, obviously. Uh, but he says something in verse 4. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship. So he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. So that's the Antichrist. That's in Revelation as well. So he's saying this. Apostasia. No sé si traduce en inglés. Apostate. Apostasy. Okay. The apostasy is, I mean, is the Antichrist or the spirit of the Antichrist. It's operating since the beginning. Anything that opposes to Jesus or what Jesus said is Antichrist. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay. So that's simple. But in the end times, it's going to be the Antichrist. I mean, it's going to be a real person, a human possessed by the devil. And he's going to pose to, to God, to worship God. He wants to take the place of God. Okay. That's what we're saying. And there's another piece of information about the end times, of the times of tribulation. This is verse 4. He's saying he's going to sit in the temple of God. And he's going to pretend that he is God. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God and his worship. So he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, this is a really important piece of information about prophecy. And because he's talking about the temple. Now, in first century, there was a temple, like physically a temple in Jerusalem. Okay, but it was destroyed in the year 70 uh, D.C. After, after death, A.D. in English, in Spanish. <laughs> in Spanish, it's for the Christ, okay? Uh, but in the year 70, the Roman Empire destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Okay, and um, so no temple. There's no temple. So this prophecy, this verse is saying, the Antichrist is going to sit in the temple and he's going to proclaim that he is God. That's the greatest apostasy. Okay. That doesn't happen yet because we have no temple. But, it, but it's in progress. It's already the blueprints exist, the plans exist to build a temple. So when we, this is just an interpretation. I'm not saying this in the Bible. The Bible is giving us clues or idea what's happening, how it's going to be. But it's going to be a world, world leader, the Antichrist. Probably some say that he's already been born. We don't know. But he's going to have a charm. He's going to be able to unite Arabs and Jews. Because he, we believe he's going to be the one um, facilitating the building of this third temple. It doesn't exist uh, yet. I mean, second temple is the temple in the times of Jesus. That's the second temple. Okay. Okay. Um, so we believe there's going to be built a third temple in Jerusalem. And this great leader, world leader, is going to be able to unite Arabs and Jews so they can build a temple in three years and a half. That's the prophecy of Daniel, the prophecy of the 70 weeks. Uh, it's teaching us a little bit about the great tribulation. That doesn't happen yet. But we believe that in the first three years and a half of the Great Tribulation, uh, the temple is going to be built because of this world leader is going to unite everyone. It's going to be a worldwide government. It's going to be a worldwide uh, currency. So we're going to, we're going that direction, like if you notice. But still, that's in, in the Bible. This leader is going to be like a great leader, charismatic. Everyone loves him. Sometimes some people believe it's going to be a Jew. Some believe it's going to be an Arab. But he's going to be able to unite them. Maybe someone else. We don't know. I mean, this is just interpretation. Or, 
uh, we're speculating somehow at some point. But that, that's what I, because he's talking about the temple. So we believe in the inauguration of the temple, this leader is going to sit on the throne and he's going to pretend that he's God, according to this prophecy and another prophecy in Daniel. Uh, that will happen. That can happen. Uh, now, the temple is not built yet, but we think that at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the temple is going to start be, to be built in three years and a half. Because in three years and a half, because this is like a seven-year Great Tribulation, and bad things are going to be happening in the world. I think the pandemic that we just passed as humans, as <laughs> It was just like a little test of what's, what's going to happen in the Great Tribulation, what can happen. Because thank God, I mean, the pandemic, I mean, people die, like millions of people die in the world. But that was like a, I mean, if we see it like in percentage, it was like a small percentage of people dying. In the Bible, there's some prophecies saying when the wrath of God is come down to the earth, and the great tribulation is say it's gonna from well I don't want to scare you <laughs> well don't stay in the great tribulation but the Bible says in Revelation like scorpions are gonna come from the from from the the earth from uh, underground like scorpions like big scorpions and they're gonna bite people and one third of the population of the world is gonna die one third not. 1% like in this pandemic or 2%, 30% or 33% of humans are going to die out of only one of these plagues because it's like seven plagues in, in Revelation. So this is one of the most devastating plagues, like this scorpions coming out of the underground and killing people. One third of humans are going to die with that plague. In the Great Tribulation. So it's going to be bad. So what I'm saying, this is just like a little test. So don't be, I mean, thank God we're out of that pandemia. I, hopefully we don't have any more pandemics. pandemics. But anyways, that's in the Bible. That's prophesied for the, the Great Tribulation. So we're not in the Great Tribulation yet. Okay? Because Jesus hasn't come. Our Paso hasn't happened. The temple is not built. But it can happen like really fast, okay? So let me just continue reading. So the apostasy is a total rebellion, total rebellion against God. So I was telling you, the, the Antichrist is going to be this world leader in the end times, in the uh, Great Tribulation. But you know, the spirit of the Antichrist is already operating since the beginning, since, since the first century. Everything that opposes Jesus, like in the terminology, everything that opposes contradicts Jesus is Antichrist. In the spirit of the Antichrist operating. So we see that, for instance, Nero was totally an Antichrist, killing the Jews and killing the Christians. Uh, Hitler, that was another Antichrist, if we put it that way, uh, killing the Jews. And, and I mean, there's many people, whoever who opposes Jesus is, is an operation of the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay, and I'm not saying like people is like has a demon inside or something, but some people are because they open their life to that. But some people they're influenced by this those spirits, the spirit of the Antichrist, everything that opposes to Jesus, it opposes to the word of God. Okay, so there's um, that's the apostasy, the act of apostasy, the biggest apostasy is that he will. Declare that he is God in the temple of God at the middle of the great tribulation, according to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. But it's saying something really interesting in verse 6 and 7 also. It's saying, um, uh, they say, and now you know what is holding him back, the, the Antichrist or the apostasy. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds him back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawlessness one will be revealed. Whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow 
with the breath of his mouth and destroyed by the splendor of his coming. That's one of the reasons we say this is a different event. It's going to happen later when the Antichrist is revealed. Okay. But it's saying, I don't know if you know, it's saying something is holding him back. So his total wickedness is not yet revealed. Start to reveal, but not yet, not the full, full, like completely. So something or someone is holding him back. So we interpret that it's talking about or either of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that is with us, or the church that is going to be taken in the Harpazo. Okay? Entonces pensamos, dice, algo lo está deteniendo al anticristo, algo está deteniendo la apostasía, el misterio de la iniquidad. Algo está deteniendo que la maldad sea más grande todavía. Ya es grande, pero va a ser más grande. Pero dice, alguien lo detiene. So, pensamos que puede ser el Espíritu Santo o la iglesia cuando es arrebatada. Cuando la iglesia es arrebatada, se desata la maldad más grande todavía. Y empieza la gran tribulación. That, eso es la interpretación de muchos de nosotros. We interpret that. That can happen that way. So, eh, así es que algo o alguien lo detiene. Primero dice algo y luego dice alguien. So, por eso pensamos, o puede ser que la iglesia, o puede ser el Espíritu Santo. Algunos dicen, puede ser la predicación del Evangelio. Porque en Mateo 24, 14, Jesús dice, este Evangelio del Reino será predicado a todo el mundo. Y luego vendrá la, 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 la destrucción. So, it can be both. Porque la iglesia es que predica el evangelio. Pero, bueno. Well, that's what... It, so, something is holding on the, the iniquity, the apostasy. Something, someone. It can be the church, it can be the Holy Spirit. But we're holding it back. We're doing that right now. That's happening right now. You can see the wickedness is increasing. Okay? It's increasing. In our last 50 years, this is increasing. Okay? There's a manif spiritual manifestation of wickedness in the world. Okay? So, let me finish with this. Oh, well, I'm not going to take time. Okay? No, casi. But uh, there's at least three, we can see three ancient gods or evil spirits. Operating in our world today, according to this, the wickedness, the, the, the apostasy. There's three gods that the canonized used to worship that are operating in our culture right now. So you need to understand that. Because we need to use, I preach from January to April about spiritual warfare. I, I teach you with the Bible how to use your weapons, how to use your armor of God. And I think this is, well, that's why I was telling you, I was struggling to share this because it has nothing to do with improving your relationships and your family. This is, this is like a continuation of that teaching about the spiritual warfare. But God put it in my heart really strong this week because of all the things we're living in our country and the world and all the wickedness that is increasing in and well, there's three, at least three, probably there's more, okay? Um, ancient gods with small, oh, lowercase g. There's no God, there's only one God, the God of Israel, Yahweh, Jehovah, el único Dios. Pero hay unos dioses paganos, antiguos, que se están operando, porque ellos no se han muerto, es, es, los, los espíritus malos están ahí, es, nosotros los humanos nos morimos, pero ellos siguen. Okay, the evil spirit continue operating, the principalities. That's what the Bible says that we were studying in Ephesians chapter 5. A war, our spiritual war is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people, but against principalities. So uh, we have at least three principalities operating really clear. It's clear that this is evil, this is satanic. Uh, we, we must be prepared and we must use our weapons. Okay, so Behal is the first one. If you go next... Be Baal, next, 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 Baal. Ese es el, el rey de los cananitas, o I mean, el dios de los cananitas. So when Israel comes to, to, to the promised land, 
the Canaanites lived there, the Philistines lived there. They all uh, idolaters, they worship the devil, they have human sacrifices, all this. And, and God instructs Israel saying, don't blend with those people because you're gonna be you're gonna be deceived, you're gonna abandon me. Dios le advierte a Israel, no se junten con los cananitas, no se mezclen con los filisteos, manténganse puros, solo pongan sus ojos en mí, dice el Señor. Por eso el primer gran mandamiento es amar a Dios con todo nuestro ser. Dios, because, porque ellos eran muy volubles. Y ellos cuando en Egipto agarraron los dioses también. Cuando salen de Egipto, traen escondidos sus figuritas y sus dioses, ¿no? De Egipto. They, they were idolaters, like, really bad. I mean, that's, that's, eso es una abominación, that's abomination before God, the idolatry. So Baal, o Belzebú, eh, la Biblia habla de él, es una de las manifestaciones de Satanás. En, uh, y es el dios que, de las moscas también, se llama, eh, y él quiere tomar el lugar de Dios. Okay. Es el espíritu del anticristo, basically. The spirit of the antichrist. Él quiere hacer como Dios. And, um, let me read then Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Uh, well, let me read since 22, so you have the context. Uh, Matthew 12, 22. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But then the Pharisees heard this. They said, It is only by Belzebub, the prince of demons, that, that this uh, fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not uh, stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. So Jesus knew, knows about this. He's teaching about this, the spiritual war. And Belzebub want, or Baal wants to take uh, the, the place of God in the hearts of the people. That was the Canaanites God, one of the Canaanites, one of the main Canaanite gods. That was the God of fertility. That was the Lord of abundance for Canaanites. And always goes... Uh, Always goes after the next generation. It, 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 it moves in the witchcraft and the occultism and rebellion. You know, Jezebel, the, the queen, she was a Baal worshiper and she was full of Baal, the spirit of Baal. And she was ter a terrible, terrible queen, a terrible person, and uh, an enemy of God, an antichrist, an anti God. And, And uh, in the temple of Baal, there were female and male prostitutes. They also always blend with sexual immorality. And sexual immorality leads to um, undesired pregnancies, which take me to the next ancient god. Go next. Which is, his name is Malak. Or oh, in English, it's Malek. Malek. In Spanish, it's Malak. El, el siguiente dios antiguo, dios pagano, o demonio, o principal, es una principality, porque operan, the principalities operate on territories, in uh, Moloch, um, talking, I mean, one leads to the other. Baal leads to this sexual immorality on the certain pregnancies. And why I'm talking about this, because Moloch is a god that always requires a human sacrifice. Okay, that was in the Canaanites, but I was telling you, we can see that manifesting in our times right now. What happened with Moloch? He requires human sacrifice so you can be prospered. So if you go next, that's like a, I didn't want to show many images of these things. I don't want to scare you or anything. 
But basically, that's what they were happening. They were offering their babies to Moloch, and, and, and they were burned alive. They were, the, Bible teach, the Bible says, I talk about Moloch, and say, they, don't pass your children by fire for Moloch. Don't kill your babies in the fire. They were offering babies, and they were burning them alive to Moloch. So Moloch can prosper them. And this is just like a figure of what's happening right now, like since the 17th. You know, Hitler killed more than 6 million of Jews in World War II. El Hitler, el Anticristo Hitler, mató más de 6 millones de judíos en la Segunda Guerra Mundial. But you know, abortion has killed more than 60 million Americans since the 1973. Pero el abor los abortos han matado más de 60 millones de bebés en Estados Unidos desde el año 1973. Ese es el espíritu de Moloch. Ofrece su bebé para ser más próspero. Dicen muchas personas lo hacen. Dicen es que me estorba ahora. No tenía planeado. I didn't plan this. I'm not going to be able to finish my school or whatever excuse. I want to be prosperous first. And they kill their babies. That's why it's abortion. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm, I don't want to offend anyone. But let's read in the Bible. And uh, in Leviticus chapter 20, because I, I, I want to explain something to you. If you, if those people, because so I think it's just a paradigm. A lie that we just read. It. People is gonna believe the lies. So if you believe that a baby is not human in the womb, that's a lie. And many people are sincere and say, "Oh no, I mean, there's still a big deal because it's not human yet." But that's a lie. In Leviticus chapter twenty, verse twenty-one, twenty, verse two. Well, let me read it in verse one. Leviticus 20, the Lord says to Moses, say to the Israelites, any Israelites or any alien living in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech must be put to death. The people of the community are to stone him. I will set my face against that man and I will cut him off from his people. For by giving his children to Molech, he has defiled my, sanct my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the people of the community close to Close their eyes when the man gives one of his children to Molech, and they fail to put him to death. I will set my face against that man and his family and will cut off from their people, both him and who follow him in prostituting them, themselves to Molech. Uh, let me keep reading until verse 5. Oh, yeah, uh, until 5. Uh, well, the kids are talking about. Baal, verse 6, I will set my face against the person who turns it to mediums and spirits to prostitute himself by following them, and I will cut him off his people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, says the Lord. So, eso es consultar espiritismo. Eso es de Baal, espiritismo y consultar el tarón. All those things, there's Baal. Spirit of Baal. It's demonic. Okay. So, uh, Molech o Moloch en español, es el que sacrifica a sus hijos. Eh, dice, dice, en otra traducción de inglés, dice, your seed. Dice, you're sacrificing your children, your babies, your, your seed. Your seed, your offspring. I like that word in English. En español no la tengo. Offspring, tu descendencia. Dice, estás entregando tu descendencia a Moloch. Your offspring. You know, the word... Uh, What say offspring? The 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 Greek word seed is is related to fetus. With what we call fetus, a baby in the womb, fetus. So people think that fetus a fetus, a baby in the womb, is not a human or it's not a person. But God is saying that's your offspring. Your descendants is in the womb. It's human. It's alive. It feels. And I don't want to get into like a methods of abortion, but it's horrific how they kill the babies in the womb. They de destroy them. They kill them. This is really bad. It's just all a lie. They say nothing's going to happen to the woman. We're protecting the, the woman. 
And what about the one, if, if the baby was a girl? The baby had a girl. I mean, this is a crazy uh, things happening. So we love women and we want to protect women. But abortion is not going to help if someone is pregnant. I mean, it's the worst thing that someone can do. Because you're killing your offspring, number one. But number two, this is a sin. This is something. And unless you repent, you're gonna, there's going to be a burden in your life. I've, I've been counseling, helping people to get out of guilt for abortion. People who had an abortion when they were teenagers or whatever stage of their lives, they were young. And years later, when they get married and they have babies, I have this case, I have, they, they have their, their first baby. And the, the husband came and asked me for help, like help my wife. She's so depressed, she want to kill herself. She has a lot of guilt. And she's is probably postpartum depression. So I talked to them and I realized what's happening. And that's what happened because she confessed and she said, I had an abortion. And every time I see my baby, the baby that I, that I have now, I remember that other baby that I killed. She realized the lie. She was like, when they told her nothing happened, you're going to be okay. You're going to be prosper. You're going to be better. That's a lie. She was depressed. She was raising out another baby, and she wants to kill herself. That was worse. That, there's a lot of wounds in, in a lot of women, many women, who believe the lie. And only that, I mean, even if they still believe the lie, they're going to give an account before God if they don't repent. They're going to be guilty. We just read in the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. That's why I'm saying if they don't repent. Because there's hope if you repent, if you come to the Lord. There's mercy and grace in Jesus for any sin. Because that's not the only sin. But it's a sin. And he's saying, so this is, imp- I mean, we see all the fingerprints of these ancient gods in our society right now. So the last one is Asera. Asera, if you go to my next, it's just the name. Asera was Toret or Venus or Aphrodita, okay? Uh, that's the wife of Baal, okay? That was like the canonized gods, false gods. And uh, she was a fertility goddess. It has to be with sexual immorality. Uh, she was called the queen of heaven. And uh, it, the, her or his priests has a special power Special ability. They can turn men into women, and they can turn women into men, according to their belief. Okay? And that's something I will live in, that crazy things happening right now. Like, we don't hate anyone. I mean, we don't hate gay people. We don't hate homosexuals or lesbian people. I mean, we respect that, everyone. Because the Bible says we don't judge the people from outside. If they don't know the Lord, I mean, we, we shouldn't judge anyone. We should love people and accept people because that's what Jesus does. But when we came to, because we are sinners, we also, I mean, it's not the only sin in the Bible. But when we come to Christ, we come to be transformed. Okay. We repent of our sins. Okay. And, uh, but this this Asherah no, is not only homosexualism and lesbianism, but it's what you call transgenderism. That was, that's not new. Okay? That was happening with the Canaanites. In the Canaanite temple of Asherah, the, their priests used to change uh, gender as they wish. But that's evil. That's satanic. That's demonic. Okay? And the people have been deceived. They think this is a good thing. Okay? And uh, you know what happened with this this guy? You see, I'm just saying, for only not only because it's satanic or it's, the Bible says, just by logic. I mean, biologically, it's only two genders, and God is the one who defines our gender. Even before we were born, when he, when he called Jeremiah to ministry, 
you remember in, in, that was Jeremiah? Yeah, I think it's Jeremiah chapter 1 or 2. When God calls the prophet, he said, I call you. See, before you were in your mother's womb, I called you and I appointed you, appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. So God is the one who appoints your gender before you were in your mother's womb. So gender is not to be discovered. Okay, It's not to be decided by us. We have been assigned already, man or woman. Okay, in the 70s, the people that thought that it was a man in a woman's body or something like that, those ideas that we hear sometimes, there was a confusion, a mental confusion. There was a mental health issue. In the army, they don't let people, homosexual, lesbian, in the army in the 70s. That was in the 70s, okay? Because they, that was in the catalog of mental health uh, uh, problems. So that's what they weren't allowed. Like in the 80s, President Clinton changed that rule. And for another, a new rule, uh, don't, only one, don't tell, don't say, don't tell, or don't tell, don't, I don't remember. Like, we're not going to ask you. So it, everything starts changing. But my point is this. I mean, remember this guy who was in the bottle of the Budweiser beer? I mean, I don't know. You don't, I know you don't drink that beer. But there was this transgender person, a, a guy dressed as a woman with makeup because they want to celebrate him. And they're, I mean, they didn't sell any beer like for one month. Because, but Dylan something is his name. And he said, well, I'm a man. I'm a woman in a man's body. That's what he said. Well, he probably needs likes or something because that was a really bad publicity uh, project for Budweiser that they they changed really fast because they weren't selling any beer. But I'm not promoting the beer, okay? What I'm saying, now he said, probably he needed more likes or something. He said, now I change, he said. You can check online. You can check Google. But he said last week, that he uh, he now likes women, okay? He now likes women, so he say now I'm a lesbian who likes women. Well, that's crazy, isn't it? I mean, even by logic, now he went back to straight, basically. <laughs> like he's a man, <laughs> and he likes women. So, but that's the craziness we're living in our society. Just to give an example, but these are manifestations, manifestations of the old ancient gods, pagan gods of the Canaanites we see in our culture right now. Why well, I'm saying all this? Because this is the, the mystery of iniquity. The, the, the wickedness is, is start growing, but Jesus is going to come. So I want to give you hope. You know who faced the Baals and the Asterids and defeated them in the Bible? There was a judge. His name is Gideon in Judge chapter 6. Gideon, let's just finish. Let me finish with Gideon. Okay. Gideon did something. He cleaned the house. In Judges chapter 6, if you come with me, I'm about to finish. In Judges chapter 6. Uh, the story of Gideon in uh, verse 25 to 28, Gideon, I mean, Judges 6. Uh, so verse 20, what God called Gideon to uh, set free Israel. It's what Gideon thinks that he's not the one. Verse 24. The first thing that Gideon has to do. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord in his house. There and called the Lord his peace. The Lord is peace. To this day it stands in opera of the Abbasurites. The same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Turn down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. 
Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the word of the Asherah pole that you could down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten, ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished with the Asherah's pole beside it, cut down in the second bull sacrifice on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, Joash, did it. The man of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is God, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So that day they called Gideon Jerub Baal, saying, let Baal contend with him. <laughs> because he broke down Baal's altar. Amen. So he did three things, Gideon. We should learn from Gideon. He was a radical. He was radical and he was obedient to God. So he built a, a, an alt, a new altar for God. So put God first and don't be afraid. Number two, he cleaned the house. I mean, Baal's altar and Asura Paul was in his house. Was his father's altar to Baal. So it was, that was really bad for the father. I mean, he was, he was worshiping the devil in the house. So we must clean our house. And that's radical. But sometimes we can pray and we will know. There's stuff in our lives that we must clean. We must clean and we must take out of our lives. You know, when the people in Ephesus came to Christ, to faith, the people in Ephesus, I think it's uh, Acts chapter 17 or 16, uh, when Paul goes to Ephesus and preaches, and a lot of people converse to Christ. The Bible says that they were burning all the witchcraft books, and that was like a lot of money worth. They didn't say, oh, I'm going to resell it in eBay or something. No, they know this is bad. So we must be radical for Christ in these times. In that sense, clean your house, clean your mind, clean your computer, clean your phone. Okay, because sometimes that happens what in Gideon's house, his own father has a, a, an altar to Baal in the pole of Astoreth. They were worshiping the Canaanites gods. And they were, they were Israelites. So the first thing God is saying, consecrate to me. Be radical. If there's something, the Spirit of God is going to show you. I don't have to go to your house to tell you. Okay. You know, and you will know by the Spirit of God. Tú vas a saber por el Espíritu de Dios las cosas que como el papá de, de Gedeón tenía el altar de Baal en su propia casa. So hay cosas que tú sabes que no le agrada a Dios que tienes. A lo mejor no es físico, pero es en tu computadora o en tu teléfono. O es una rela relación que no debes tener. Or maybe it's a relationship you should be having. Okay. So be radical, like as Gideon. Be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Clean your house. It's, it's speak up. Train your children. Entrena, entrenamos nuestros hijos. Ellos están, nuestros muchachos están en un ambiente muy difícil. En las escuelas, aún en middle school. Yo, yo he tenido personas de consejería. I have been counseling youth for many years. And it, sometimes it's horrible what they're living. In what, even at the school, they've been offering drugs and stuff. Don't contaminate your life. You don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. You don't need to smoke. You don't need that. You need Jesus in your life, leading your life. Consecrate to Jesus. Okay. Uh, let us train our children. Uh, consecrate your life. Amen. And express yourself. Express yourself. That's good. If we can 
share the good news, share the truth and love. That's really important. Don't judge people. Like, I hope you learned something this morning. I, I hope you get your eyes open in, in some of these things that are happening right now in our culture. That we should love people. We don't judge people. But they need the truth. That's what we just read at the beginning. Um, let me just finish reading what we just started reading in Second Thessalonians. It's saying that, like, we should love the truth. And people is believing lies. So we don't, we're not to judge them, but to pointing them to the cross, pointing them to Jesus. Amen. So just let me finish reading about the people on the in the in these times. Uh, verse uh, Second Thessalonians two. Verse nine. The coming of the lawlessness one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sent them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that they will be condemned. Who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. So we must pray because a lot of, or some people, delight in wickedness. This month, they're declared in 2010, President Obama declared this month the month of pride of all these, some of the things I share with you. The Bible is saying, don't. They're condemned because they delight in wickedness. We don't delight in We're not pride. We don't celebrate pride month. We don't celebrate sin. But we pray for God's mercy. And, we, and I pray that we show love people to people. To people different than us. I was sharing with, with men last night. We don't discriminate anyone. We shouldn't. But anything. Not even sexual preference. God loves everyone. But he wants to bring them to the truth. So they can be saved. And there's a spirit of. Um, they have been deceived. To believe lies. We just read it. So they need the lie. They need the truth. They need love. Acceptance. In the sense of that. When Jesus is calling us. Because he called us all. And we all have sinned. But to be transformed by the power of the Spirit of God. To be sanctified. To be make a new person in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Vamos a orar. Will you please stand up? And let us finish. Amen. Oremos. Padre, te damos gracias por tu palabra. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you teach us. In this message, Lord, we'll give fruit in our lives. Help us as Gideon to be radical for you in these times to, to share your gospel, Lord, to share your word, to share your love, to serve other people, to love other people so they can know the truth of the gospel. We bless your church in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Que Dios les bendiga. God bless you all. Estamos despedidos.